What's up my painting friends? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stoof. Well, you guys already know that because you are my patrons. This is Patreon exclusive content. Thank you guys for your support. This video is a tutorial to create that butterfly you just saw. And that is a painting I did just to review these new heavy bodied acrylics that I had purchased. And I wasn't going to do a tutorial for this one, but I decided, ah, what the heck, it looks really nice. And I think you guys would appreciate a tutorial. So I'm making a tutorial for you guys. Like I mentioned, we're using my Liquitex heavy bodied acrylic paints here. So our colors today are ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, dioxazane purple, magenta, naphthal red light, Hansa yellow, brilliant blue, emerald green, phthalo green, bronze yellow, black, titanium white. I also have a yellow ochre from a different brand paint and a green gold from a different brand paint there as well. So to get started with this painting, I did not use the full grid method, but I just separated this little canvas. This is an eight inch by 10 inch canvas into four quadrants by putting that little crosshair in the middle and just putting a midpoint between top and bottom on the left and right sides and on the top and the bottom separating the right and left sides. So that just gave me an idea of where the base of the body should go. And when I looked at my reference photograph, I saw that the base of the body was just above center in the whole painting. So I sketched that out and then I started to sketch out the wings and the, this type of butterfly, I think it's a swallowtail. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but this type of butterfly has a really intricate pattern on the wings, especially on the bottom wings. Uh, so they, it's very important to get your wings symmetrical. And I think that's probably the trickiest part with this painting. It's just making sure that everything on the left side of the butterfly matches up with the right side of the butterfly. And by sketching the scene out properly, you can save a lot of time down the road uh, by having you having to touch up things that, you know, if you make one wing too big, then you have to go back and completely redo your whole pattern on the wing if it's uh, too large. So it's good to make sure everything is right from the base point, just, just from the get go. So I'm just looking at my reference photo, looking back at the canvas and just very loosely sketching. I am using my phthalo blue thinned down with some water here to sketch out this concept. I will give you guys a grid for this one that, that will be on Patreon as well. So you guys can just see that reference grid if you would like. I'll just put a grid right over the finished painting so that you guys can just, uh, if you want to put a grid on an 8 by 10 inch uh, canvas, then you can have that match up perfectly with my painting and they'll make things much easier if you want to use the full grid method for your painting. And in my reference photo, this butterfly was on a different type of flower uh, and I just kind of made these flowers up. I'm not sure if these flowers exist. <laughs> uh, they kind of, they look like a few wildflowers that I've seen, but I, I'm just not sure exactly what they are. I kind of made them from my imagination. And we're going to speed things up here for the rest of the sketch. If you do follow the grid method, then basically you just keep sketching out everything that you see on the reference photo into your painting on the canvas and just keep using that same color, thin down with water until you get everything basically covered up. I definitely recommend starting with the butterfly just because that's the focus of this painting. All right, and once we have that scene sketched out, right now it looks a little chaotic and it might get a little confusing. Uh, so if you want to do a little bit of base shading, like in the flowers or like in between the leaves, you could do that. Uh, but we are gonna go in with a nice deep shadow color here. Uh, so if you can figure out where your shadows are gonna be, then you're good to go. <laughs> All right, so now I'm mixing my phthalo blue with the emerald green. And I'm just using a flat tipped medium sized brush here. And I'm just taking that brush and very thickly applying the paint and filling in the spaces in between the leaves that are going to be in deep shadow. 
and we're going to speed things up again here because we're basically just repeating this all around the entire canvas and i'm assuming that there's a deep shadow in all of these little void spaces if there isn't a leaf or there isn't a flower i'm just starting out with this deep deep shadow and then later we can come back and start to add more variation in color so you can see a little bit of variation in color happening here and that's just because i'm kind of playing with the paint colors a bit uh, but in general if you just stick with emerald green with phthalo blue you can add a hint of burnt umber in there as well to make it even darker uh, and less saturated but that's what we started out with to get that base deep shadow i ended up painting over some of my sketched out leaves as well and that's okay because we can always come back and layer new leaves on top so I'm cleaning off my brush here, getting that extra water off of the brush using a napkin or paper towel. And now we're gonna start adding some of our warmer greens. So I'm taking some emerald green and some green gold. I added a hint of my naphthal red light, my Hansa yellow and white. I also added a hint of black in there too, just to tone down that green, make it a little bit less saturated. And then I started to use this as my base color for the leaves. So I'm just filling in all of my little leaf shapes here. Uh, when I sketched out my leaves, I wanted to make sure that they aren't all oriented the same way, that they don't all have the same shape and size. So keep that in mind too, if you're sketching without using the grid method, uh, you wanna have variety in your leaves. And for the leaves closer to the top of the canvas, there's a little more light on them. So I just mixed in a little bit more white and some of my yellow ochre for the base color for those guys. And I started to mix a little bit of that brighter color for some random leaves too, just to start to build a little bit of depth without going too crazy. So as you can see here, like some of the leaves are a little bit farther down in the shadow and some of them are a little closer and have a little bit more light to them. Uh, and we're going to keep building on that as we keep working on this painting. If it's easier for you to just make these all one base color right now, then you can do that. Uh, I think making them have a little bit of va variation for the base color in the leaves does help to differentiate each leaf shape from another leaf, though. I will say that. So once I got the basic shapes down for the leaves. I also started to paint in some shapes for the stems for some of these flowers uh, and like the stems on the plant that go up to the more leaves. And the stems have a little bit more yellow ochre in them. So I mix a little more yellow ochre and a hint of white, uh, maybe a little more green gold as well. Also built up a bit of a shadow on the right side of the stem using that base color for the shadow. And I also used that highlight color for the stem, which had a little more yellow ochre mixed in for the um, veins in the leaves. So that central vein that just goes from bottom to top of each leaf, I painted a little line there using my yellow ochre that's blended with the greens. And now I'm starting to have fun building up some more texture and some more highlights and shadows in the leaves here uh, without getting into like too crazy of detail. So I'm just kind of adding some shadows under the highlight in that stem part uh, and the veins. And then I'm going back and using different brush strokes, uh, kind of like pushing the paint onto the canvas with the brush uh, to create a bit of a leafy texture for some of the leaves at the top where we have a little bit more detail visible, putting a little bit more contrast on the leaves. One thing I will say is that I felt like the leaves looked a bit flat here and that's because this is a uh, an acrylic paint set and I didn't have like a full range of greens that I needed. If I would have added a burnt umber and some burnt sienna to this palette, I think I could have achieved a little more variety in my greens uh, to make things stand out even more and look a little bit less flat. So if you wanna do that, you can for sure. And once I got 
just a little bit more going on with the leaves. Then I started to add my base color for the flower clusters. So this one is just pure naphthal red and I'm just taking my smaller round tipped brush. You could use a flat tipped or a round tipped brush here and just kind of plopping that paint onto the canvas pretty thickly trying to cover up the shadows. So you can see a little bit of the shadows through that paint. I think that's what I'm pointing out here. Um, and that's okay. We're going to end up building up a little bit more layering with highlights and shadows on this flower cluster. So we're not going to notice that later on. I left a little bit of a shadow right under the butterfly. Next, we're moving to the flower cluster to the left of that first one I did, and I'm mixing a little magenta, and I think there might be some sangria red in there too. So if you have a cool red and a magenta, you could blend those together to get a little cooler, darker red. You could also mix black with your red for this one too, uh, but you want to have variation in your colors and in your lighting in your flower clusters. Don't make everything be exactly the same color. Just filling in all the white space for each little flower cluster. Here I'm cleaning my brush off very well before switching over to that yellow Hansa and putting a base layer of paint in for the butterfly. So. Here's a couple good things that we learned from posting this on YouTube. Uh, just as a review, I had comments on my yellow. So one of my comments was that this yellow is a little too translucent. And that's something I encounter with every acrylic paint. Uh, but someone had commented that if you just paint white paint down first, then put your yellow on top of it after the white dries, then you lose that, then it becomes a little bit more opaque looking. So you can see that blue sketch line and that crosshair that I initially put on the canvas here. So if I would have put a white coat of paint down first, let that dry and then put my yellow on top, that should fix the problem of me seeing the blue through my yellow. So that's something you can keep in mind for your painting. You also could use a larger brush. Somebody also commented, why are you using such a small brush to fill in your base color on the butterfly's wings? And I said, um, I didn't need to use a small brush there. <laughs> so you don't need to use a small brush just to fill in that base color. So I did not take that yellow color all the way out to the wings because the wings edges have more black and blue in them. So I just took that yellow out to about three quarters of an inch from the edge of the wings on the left and right side. And then at the base of the butterfly's wings, there's maybe about like one inch between the yellow and the bottom of the wing. Then I just took some pure black, as you can see here, and I just outlined the top of the wing using a small round tipped brush. You could use a liner brush here if you want an even thinner line. And I just also outlined the outer edge of the right side of the top wing. Still just using pure black. And I keep checking my reference photo because this is the first time I've painted one of these butterflies and I wasn't sure what the pattern was like on the wing. So I'm a little bit slow and cautious here. I pull that black all the way up to the yellow and I painted this while the yellow was still wet so that I could take the extra paint off my brush there and then start to kind of blend the black into the yellow to soften that border because the butterfly here has like a powdery brown dusty transition from that yellow to black. It's really beautiful. So I was trying to imitate that appearance here. Next, I move to the bottom wing on the right side of the butterfly. And this is where I start to define that border a little bit more precisely as well. 
I'm carefully looking at my reference photograph and I see that this wing has like little zigzag like loopy shapes like you can see there <laughs> really bad with the words uh, and then it continues the, they're like little bubbles like little u shapes coming out little bumps there we go bumps coming out from <laughs> the side of the wing and you want to count whenever you're painting your right side count how many you put on that side and make sure you do the same thing on your left side You'll see that I got a little bit off with my spacing on mine, but it's not noticeable once you get to the end and you see all of the crazy patterns on the butterfly's wing. So I did the same thing there. We kept those little uh, bumps. <laughs> they continue going up into the wing. I softened up the edges of those so they would blend a little bit into the yellow. And that gets our base coat down for the right side of the wing. And I just repeated the exact same thing on the left side of the butterfly, outlining the outer edges, making sure the wings are about the same size on both the left and right side, and counting my bumps at the base of the butterfly on the left and right side, making sure those match up as well. Here I'm blending Hansa Yellow, Naphthal Red Light, and White. And next I create another little color mixing section with magenta, Hansa Yellow. And here I'm just starting to blend some variations of my warm hues to create highlight colors for the flower clusters. I mixed a little bit of white in there as well, taking more magenta and just some titanium white there. Taking some naphthal red, adding it to that color just a bit. So now I have those three variations of highlight so that I can get a good little variety in my flower clusters here. I don't want every flower cluster to have the exact same color for highlights. And I started to make these little clusters of flowers kind of like hydrangeas have, but I don't think these definitely would not be hydrangeas. <laughs> they're too small, little clusters. But they're just little clusters of four or five petaled flowers. And I just kind of took up the space that I put down there with my base color and added little petals in each little cluster. You could make your flower petals as big as this, or you could make them smaller so you could fit even more little flower petals in a cluster. It's up to you. But for the highlight, I basically just used that color as like a base color for highlight, and then I go back with a third level of detail in the flower clusters and start to add some shadows. Like here, I'm starting to add a little bit more magenta just to put this one lower and put that other flower cluster higher. I'm playing around with making it a little bit darker in the center of each flower by adding a little bit more magenta and less white. But by adding this little variety in your flowers, it makes some look like they're on top and some look like they're below in shadow. So I tested out that first flower cluster first to make sure I liked how that looked. And then I started doing all of the other ones using the same method, putting a base highlight color and then adding a boosted highlight and a shadow in different little sections to create this flower cluster that looked like it had a little bit of depth to it. Here I added even more Hansa yellow just to make it extra orangey looking. Here I'm mixing white with yellow ochre and some green gold in the existing green palette section. And I'm just starting to continue working on the detail in the plants. 
So I put that little color down there for that leaf. I noticed that it's not as bright as I want it to be, so I just used what was on the brush to start building up a leaf below it. Then I blended in a little bit more white and yellow ochre and came back to this leaf here and just really highlighted up that edge just to draw attention to this leaf and make it look like the sun is just brightening it up. Because this still isn't as bright as that yellow and the butterfly, it doesn't really take too much attention away, but it still starts to build up that depth in the background. I made the leaves have like little ridges in them by just kind of using my brush to make it not a perfectly smooth line for the leaf edges. Mixing a little bit more emerald green. And using that color to build up a highlight on the edges of this leaf. Here I'm mixing my phthalo green with some of my cool red, so that wine red color, and some burnt umber. And I'm just really darkening up. Or actually, that was a purple, not a burnt umber. <laughs> you could use burnt umber there. Uh, so I'm just really darkening up some of these shadows now and just continuing to build that depth in the background and as you can see I'm just putting this shadow color in little tiny sections I'm not completely filling in a shadow underneath a leaf from one leaf to the next leaf with that same color I'm kind of letting the shadows fade in and out to make it look like we have even more leaves down there we just can't exactly see them that well <laughs> Whenever you have a flower cluster, you might want to put a bit of a shadow on the leaf right behind it or right below it just to make that flower cluster look like it's higher above that leaf and creating a shadow on the leaf below it. You could put some lines for shadows too as if there are stems in the background that are in shadow. So you just saw me take a little break from these flower clusters to work on the leaves a bit more. Now I'm re returning to working on those flower clusters, still using that same approach, putting a base little highlight color on top of the base color below it, and then starting to outline individual little petals, creating shadows around each petal, and then building up more shadows and more highlights on each cluster. And some of them have more reds and in them, and some of them have more magenta in them. Uh, I wanted to create a bit more variety in these. This one down here has even more blue in it. I thought this one looks like it's really far down in shadow, so I'm gonna make it even more purple looking. That one that I'm working on there is in deep shadow, but it's more warm. So just play around with your reds and purples and find a good set of colors that work for you. If you'd like, you don't even have to make your flowers red and purple. You could use a different color. If you wanted to make these all more purple, that would make a nice complementary color to the yellow in the butterfly's wings. So that would make the painting really stand out if you wanted to do that. Then I'm tweaking the leaves a bit more again. Just trying to finish up that background to the point where it's readable and it looks like it could be finished. <laughs> I think I do go back and touch up the background a bit more later, but I got it to a point where now I feel like I can work on the butterfly and everything else is going to make sense. So now we're doing the fun part. We started to work on the detail in the butterfly's wings. I'm using a small round tipped brush here and I'm just taking my pure black paint and I'm starting to create the little stripe pattern on the wings. This 
This first stripe is about as thick as the abdomen body part of the butterfly, and it's about its spacing is about one abdomen body part away from the abdomen body part. <laughs> and it just starts out kind of thick at the top and it gets thin towards the bottom, just like the actual abdomen does, and then it goes farther down and then kind of comes right back up at a diagonal. The second stripe only comes down a little bit, as you can see there, and it's about the same thickness as that first one. After I got those two stripes in there and just did little back and forth brush strokes to get that kind of um, jagged edge look, I took my liner brush and I wet down the paint. I just mixed in some water so I could get a nice thin line here, and I created a line that went out from the abdomen body part through the two stripes, kind of made its way up for a bit, and then diagonal down at like a 30 degree angle to go out to the edge of the wing. Then I made additional lines that just keep continuing that pattern parallel to the diagonal going out from the first line out to each wing, each part of the wing. And then I connected that line at the top and then added two more going out to the wing. And if that sounds a little bit confusing, then maybe just slow down this video so you could re-watch how I just painted these lines here. Uh, it's a little tricky at first if you're not used to painting patterns on butterflies, um, but if you can get this first one right, then all you have to do is repeat this pattern on the left side of the wing. So as long as you get it right on the first one, then you're good to go. So take your time with the first one and make sure you're happy with it before you try to repeat that pattern on the left side. Next, I'm taking my liner brush and adding a little bit of a highlight on the black upper border of the wing. And I'm just adding a little bit of yellow ochre here and white and just carrying that line right on top of the black. Now I went over those two black stripes again with my black paint just to thicken them up a bit and I'm continuing to create this stripe pattern and carry it all the way out to the edge of the wing. We have another stripe that I add over top of those little lines that I painted earlier and a little bit of that yellow kind of peeks through the brown and that's okay because we do have like a bit of like a brown color here at that transition between the yellow and the black. I actually mix a little bit of brown in here just to try to warm up that transition and make it a little bit softer and give us a little bit of that powdery brown look. And once I finished that upper part of the wing, I started to work on the lower right side of the wing here using my liner brush and we have like a big loop so I created that loop with the line for that pattern then we have lines that come out from that loop we kind of have like little angles in that loop as you can see there it's not just a perfect circle it's like kind of like a jagged little I don't know polygon and each little angle part of that polygon connects to a line that connects to the outer edge of the butterfly's wing. So there I have one, two, three, four, five, six lines it looks like. There's my sixth one. Uh, so yeah, if it helps you to count how many and that might help you space them out equally, uh, you can, you know, every butterfly has a different pattern. They're not all exactly the same, even though in general they're yellow with black stripes and these lines on them with some white and some blue and a little bit of red the pattern isn't exactly the same on every single butterfly so if your pattern doesn't look exactly like mine then that's not a big deal it could just be a different butterfly next i'm taking my white using my liner brush and i thin this down just a little bit i don't want to thin this down too much to where we lose that brilliant white color uh, but i did thin it down a bit just so i could work with it a bit more and we basically add a little highlight. It's it's kind of it looks like a highlight, but it's actually white pigment. I guess on I don't know. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's white pigment, but it, the butterfly 
has white there. It's not just like a highlight or a reflection of light. And we just carry that down along the outer edge of that long tip of the tail there of the wing. <laughs> I started recording again at 7 a.m. guys, so I'm not awake yet and my words are even worse than normal. My apologies. All right, so then we continue this nice little white liner here. And it just, it's, it acts like a highlight where you don't put it on the full outer edge, like it's only on little sections, so that's why it kind of looks like a highlight, and that's why I use that word. We leave little sections black, and we highlight the inner part of each of these bumps. And then we t continue working with the liner brush and we just repeat that pattern on the upper part of the wing. The upper part of the wing has smaller little ridges. It doesn't have those true bump shapes that we have in the lower wing, but we still want to pretend that something's there and just put little tiny lines with uh, leaving the black space in between each line. It kind of is if you look at those liner brush lines that I, those sections that I painted, it's like those little white lines are at the edge of each of those. So you want to go from one black liner brush line to the next liner brush line and leave a little bit of black space in between that. Next, we just take some Hansa yellow and I just put a little line over each of those white lines, not right on top of it, but you know, a little bit of space in between it closer into the wing. Then we take some yellow and I add two more little lines of yellow at the top, add a bit more yellow and brown on that section that is black just to get a smoother transition there. Then I start to take some of my cadmium yellow and I put that in between my lines that I painted before at the inner part of the wing. I wanted to make the inner part of the wing a little bit warmer and I continued to build up my layering with my yellow in between those lines uh, just to try to hide that blue paint that was hiding in below. Next I worked on the abdomen. We have yellow on both the left and right side of it and just like a black strip down the middle. And then on the lower half of that abdomen we have a or thorax, you know, I forget these words too. I need to go back to biology. Um, we have just a white line in the center there. Then on the head we have these two little eye looking things and then I'm still using my liner brush to create the two antenna that stick out from the butterfly and they have a little dot at the edge of them so if you press a little harder at the edge uh, for the little dots at the end of the antennas and then pick up the brush a bit so it's not pressing as hard for the line then you'll get a thicker dot for the head and a thinner line for the line. Then we move over to the left side of the wing and we just repeat the exact same thing we did on the right side of the wing. So I sped this up for you guys uh, to keep this video a little bit shorter. Uh, but when you're working on the left side, just keep looking at your right side and make sure things are symmetrical. Alright, so a couple more little touch-ups here to the body and now we're ready for the next step. So make sure that both your left and right side are dry now. You want that black paint to be dry and we're going to take some yellow, just some Hansa yellow. And we're just adding this little bump over the white lines at the base of each wing just like at the top part of the wing how we have that yellow over the white we're doing the same thing at the bottom but the yellow is thicker and it has like a rounded edge on one side and then it like gets narrower and thinner and just like has a point at the other side but it still is like a round little curve to it it kind of reminds me of like a music note And we just repeat that on the left and right side, making sure things are symmetrical. 
So you should have four of those yellow things on each side, unless you you chose to do more bumps on your wing than have as many as you know as many bumps as you have on your wing. And now for the part that I think makes this butterfly so beautiful is the blue. So we have brilliant blue here, and just using pure brilliant blue, and I'm starting to add these little uh, curved lines here, just like U shapes basically, upside down U's. They look like candy canes, I guess. <laughs> well, those ones do. As they move towards the outer edges of the wings, they look more like upside down U's than candy canes. So we just keep putting these in each of those sections that I created with my black liner brush at the beginning. So each little section gets a little upside down U with the blue and it starts to create this pattern and you want it to get farther away from that black at the lowest point of the wing and then it comes closer up to that black and yellow contact as you move farther up and closer to the body. So like as you can see here there's a little bit more black space right in the section that's above the long part of the base of the wing and then it gets closer to the yellow black border as we move farther up. And I'm just using a small round tipped brush here. If you want to use a liner brush you can. And we only put these in the bottom half of the wing. There's maybe like one little section in the upper part of the wing that gets that blue. Now I'm starting to build up the detail in the blue part. So this butterfly has like little tiny dots of blue in the wing here. So I started with that U shape, that upside down U shape, but it really doesn't look like that in real life. It, it has like a blend, like it kind of transitions. That blue just like fades in and fades out with a bunch of tiny dots. So I started to add these dark blue dots just using phthalo blue and putting that right over top of my brilliant blue and just putting these teeny tiny little dots all on the underside, bottom side, kind of letting that light blue fade into the black just with little dots. And then once I got these little dots in here with the blue, I went to pure black and I continued doing that same process. I did some dots, but right at the very base, I wanted to also make it look more like that upside down U shape and have more of that rounded bottom. So I uh, tweaked the bottom there, just adding a little bit more black and kind of let that black fade up into the blue. I also touched up the top above that bump there just to get a darker black Continuing this all the way from the left side of the wing over to the right side on every little ridge. And then once I put the black down, I let that dry. And then of course I felt like I darkened it too much, so I go back with some more dots using a mixture of Brilliant Blue and a little tiny bit of Thalo Blue. If you want to have more Brilliant Blue, it's just going to be a little brighter. And I just put these teeny tiny little dots back on the wing in each little section, kind of letting it fade out into the black. At this point, these uh, bump upside down U shape things don't have like a solid line anymore. They're kind of fading out with those little dots. And that's the look I was going for.
I do the same thing with these little dots right above these blue sections where I want to transition the black to the yellow, just adding little yellow dots closest to the yellow and then kind of separating the dots a little bit more as they're getting closer to the blue. And it's creating that nice, pretty little, almost like a sparkly look from the all these little dots of yellow. Point, that's basically it, guys. Uh, I just touch up a couple things here with the yellow Hansa. I add a bit of my uh, like burnt sienna color right at the edge of the inner part of the wing where it touches the abdomen part. Uh, just to keep building that color build, I guess, like the transition of really light yellow Hansa out into like that brown color. And then I add another round of dots using just brilliant blue to brighten it up a bit. And once that is done, I just tweak a couple more little minor things in the butterfly's wings to, to like get happy with the finished result. And then I sign the painting and then we call it a finished painting. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any more recommendations for painting tutorials you'd like to see, then just let me know on Patreon or leave a comment on any of my YouTube videos. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and happy painting. Bye-bye!